Watch this clip as Ray speaks to a man named Jordan, who says he doesn't believe in God, he believes in the universe. And he sees himself as a gear in a big clock, and he's waiting around for the day when he's going to break. So if you have time, watch the whole clip and see if you can discover what makes Jordan tick. Jordan, it's been said there are only two things in life that are sure. Do you know what they are? Uh, no. Death and taxes. <laughs> but that's not true. A lot of people avoid taxes. All you need is a good uh, account. But no one avoids death. Um, if there was a way to avoid death, would you be interested? Uh, not really. So you don't like living? Well, I like living, but I think death is kind of, in its own way, sort of natural, beautiful in a way. It's, it's got its, it does. It's, it's natural. It's, it's what happens. If you and I were walking toward a thousand foot cliff, we're in a line, and, and people were going off in front of us off the cliff, one after the other, I'd want to get out of the line if there was some way. I wouldn't say this is natural, it's beautiful. I'd say this is horrific. I mean, you're going to die. Well, yeah, but I mean, at least I get to live the time I'm here. How, long, how old are you? I'm 20. So when are you going to die? I don't know. What's that? It's uh, 21. Happy about that? I wouldn't be, but it would happen. It, that's just how things work. Yeah. I believe in the universe, and it, it's like a clock. It just keeps ticking, keeps moving, and I'm just one of the gears. And so you're like a bee in the beehive, and if you get stung, they throw your body over the side and move on. Oh no, I'm more like a gear in a clock. I uh, I feel like I keep moving until I, I'm busted. So what makes you tick? I mean, why why are you alive? Why am I alive? I don't really know. So you've got no purpose for existence. I do. Uh, just to live, to live every day, and and that's my gift. You believe in God? No, I don't. So you're an atheist? I'm not an atheist. So atheists are people that don't believe in God. Atheists are people who don't believe in anything. I believe there is something out there, but I'm not sure what. So it's not God, though? But it's not God. I don't believe in one person controlling everything. If anything, my God is the universe. So it's... why wouldn't you want to believe there is one God controlling everything? And because then that's leaving yourself without any options. You like options? I like options. Why would you like options when it comes to one God that you're responsible to? Let's see if we can uncover why you wouldn't like God to exist. Um, you think you're a good person? Uh, most part. I mean, everyone's got their own evils, you know. So you're, you're, you're evil? I'm not evil, but everyone has their evils, of course. I mean, not everyone's perfect. Everyone's done something wrong. So you've done things that are wrong? Probably. Some people, someone, anyone. Have you lied and stolen? Uh, never really stolen. Probably lied in the past. I'm sure everyone has at least once in their life. So you've lied? Yes. So you're a liar? Not necessarily a liar. What do you call someone who tells lies? A liar, I guess. Okay, have you ever stolen anything and think, even if it's small? Um, not that I can remember now. I've You've never forgotten. For it. What's that? You've forgotten what you stole? No, I, I, I don't. So you, so you haven't stolen anything in your whole life? No, not that I can remember. Downloaded music off the internet, taken something from work that didn't belong to you? No. You're a very honest man. Yeah, just about. Except you're a self-admitted liar, and I can't believe you. A little believe. bit of a lie, a little bit of a liar. <laughs> okay, have you ever used God's name in vain? Uh, probably, once or twice, maybe more. <laughs> That's called blasphemy. We use God's name as a cuss word. The Bible says your enemies take your name in vain. And there's no greater contempt you can have for God than to use his name as a cuss word. It's called blasphemy. Now Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes. Have you had sex out of marriage? Yes. So this is why you don't want to believe in God. No, no, no. That's not why I don't let want me, to Let me give you a summation thing. Okay. By your own admission, you're a liar. I don't know if you're a thief, but you're a blasphemer an adulterer at heart, and a fornicator. So if God did exist and you're morally responsible to him, it wouldn't be a good feeling. Make you feel uncomfortable. Well, and that's, that's why we object to God, because of the moral responsibility that comes with God. If we can make up a false God and say it's just the universe that doesn't think and doesn't care about right and wrong, we feel more comfortable. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, but I, I don't know. I feel like, um, in a way, it, it, if you... You do one thing wrong. I mean, God's supposed to be this great, you know, forgiving person, of course. I mean, that's all I ever hear about. I've never actually read the Bible myself because I've never really sat down and done it. <laughs> but, um, I mean, the things that, I mean, everyone's done. No one's morally perfect. No one, no one can say that they've done nothing wrong in their life. That's exactly right. So does it concern you that if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd be guilty and end up in hell? I would accept that because that's, accept what I, it? that's what I did. Do you know what? You don't need to accept it because this God that you spoke of, who uh, is forgiving, is rich in mercy. And even though he's a just judge and you're his enemy and his wrath abides on you and you're heading for hell, 
He's made a way for you to be forgiven. Do you know what that way is? No. Well, 2,000 years ago, God became a, a human being, Jesus of Nazareth, and he suffered and died on the cross. You know that? Well, I believe, I thought Jesus was God's son. Well, he said he has God in human form. He called himself the Son of Man, the Son of God. He called himself a lot of different names. But the Bible says he was God in human form. He was morally perfect, and he gave his perfect life as a sacrifice for the sin of the world. Let me put it this way and see if it makes sense. In God's eyes, you're a criminal. He's a judge. You and I have violated his law, the Ten Commandments. We're heading for his prison, a place called hell, because we're criminals. But God stepped in and paid our fine for us through the Savior. That means he can legally dismiss your case. You can walk out of the courtroom exonerated. Your death sentence be commute, can be commuted because God paid your fine through the cross and rose from the dead on the third day. And what you've got to do to find everlasting life is repent, turn from your sins, and trust in Jesus Christ, like you trust a parachute. You know, if you're up in a plane and you're going to jump 10,000 feet and say, hey, put this para parachute on, trust yourself to it, it's going to save you. If you did that, you're saved from the consequences of what gravity could do to you. It's the same with God's law. You've violated it. It's going to crush you. You're going to end up in hell forever, damned as a just dessert. But God offers you a parachute and the Savior. And the Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Does this make sense, Jordan? To some. I, uh, like I said, I believe in the universe. Does it make sense to you? Uh, in an ex to an extent, like I said. It, it well, would you give this some serious thought? Because really, you don't know when you're going to die. About 30 yards from here, I interviewed a guy just like I'm interviewing you. And he says, I got 20, 30 years. He was dead within a year. He got killed in a car accident. 40,000 Americans will die in car accidents this year. A lot of young people will die because it's a dumb age when you're 20. You take risks, you know? Well, true, but so I mean... please think about this, will you? Because <laughs> I care about you and where you spend eternity. We'll never meet again, but I, I'd hate the thought of you head, you know, going to hell if, if, if you died in your sleep and God giving you justice. I don't know, the way I believe, I don't believe I'm going to go to hell. I believe. I know that. That's why I'm talking to you. No, of course. But I believe that, you know, when I die, I'm just going to transform into something else. You could know? you be wrong? Uh, anyone could be wrong. You could be wrong about what you're thinking. I could be wrong about what I'm thinking. Yeah. Anyone anyone who, who has a religion, who has an idea, they could be wrong. Yeah, but there's one thing you're not taking in the equation. God is never wrong. I admitted I was wrong and I've sided with God who's never wrong. And I'm telling you the gospel truth. There is a God. He's just and holy. There is a hell. He gave you a conscience so you'd know right from wrong. You're an enemy of God. And every time you sin, you stir up his wrath. And God doesn't want you to end up in hell. It's not his will. He's made a way for sinners to be forgiven. So just open your heart, open the Bible. Have you got one at home? No. Learn how to share your faith biblically. Each week, we send out a free ministry update and it contains a short video clip. Ray finds colorful characters, he witnesses to them, and then I chalk talk the clip. Here's some samples. Do you believe in God? Of course. I believe God actually learns through us. That, there's a heaven right here. Multiple times a day, God hugs me. What planet are you living on? I have no problem standing before the Lord as I am. After seeing new clips each week and understanding the biblical principles behind them, you will end up saying, I could do that. There's no charge for the update. Just go here and sign up here and we'll send it to you every week. For God so loved the world that He gave His only forgotten Son. Also, while you're there, check out the School of Biblical Evangelism. The School of Biblical Evangelism is a full-blown online evangelism course. It'll help you overcome your fears. It'll help give you the answers to the 100 most commonly asked questions and objections to the Christian faith. <laughs> You'll find details on livingwaters.com.